So now in this video, we're going to take a look at this circuit. I'll take it apart and I put it together step by step like I've been doing in the other videos in this series. So I wanted to make a circuit that shows what uh, the trim pot's doing. I use the trim pot a lot in my videos. And what I'm really doing is setting a voltage. Also, it lets current flow through it too. So that needs to be taken into account. But for the most part, trim pots are used as voltage dividers and they output a voltage. And in this case, when you put five volts across it, you can either go to five volts or go down to a zero volts and uh, anywhere in between. So first, let's go up to five volts for this circuit. And you're gonna see that the PNP transistor there turns off. Not suddenly, but uh, it turns off. Now it's fully off. And then uh, when we raise it, it comes back on if I go slow enough and get it to slowly go on. And then we come over here. Now you're gonna see that the NPN transistor Start slowing, going off. Now it's off. There is a problem with this switch there, you saw it. I think it's from pushing it into the board and uh, levering it out with the screwdriver multiple times. I think we kind of got a short in there. But uh, you can see it kind of flicker. It shouldn't be doing that, but it's not a big enough deal where I'm gonna swap this out for a different trim pot for this video. So first let's look at the trim pot. So. It's a schematic symbol of a resistor with an arrow coming to it. The arrow is the output. And then normally the uh, trim pot is, uh, or other voltage dividers have the resistance directly to each of the uh, power rails. And so there's a resistive element within here and a wiper that goes along that resistive element. You can also make it with fixed resistors, which we're gonna have in this circuit. You can see a resistor there and a resistor there and we're tapped into there and ultimately we'll have half of the power supply voltage at uh, this point there so we'll have about 2.5 volts set by the circuit and if we go to 2.5 volts at the uh, trim pot it will even out and it will basically make it look like the trim pot's not there but uh, in any case let's go to uh, the trim pot we can to take a uh, voltage measurement take this jumper which I have an alligator clip on that end and then this one we put to the output because we want to know the voltage of the output in relationship to the voltage at uh, ground there we go and I can just clip the multimeter probes directly to there and my hands are free from there and so let's turn the uh, meter on we're measuring voltage which is pretty safe and this meter auto ranges all of its voltages there we go I just turned the power on there you can see we're about halfway so about 2.5 volts as I just mentioned before if I turn it towards the uh, positive rail up here you can see we get less resistance on the positive side more resistance on the negative side the voltage goes up now we're connected directly to the rail and uh, so at the output here we have 5 volts we're connected directly at that rail let's work our way down now we are connected directly to the negative rail which is where we have the black probe so the voltage difference from here to there is practically zero volts there's a little internal resistance a tiny bit of resistance where the wires connect and stuff plus everything has a tiny bit of resistance so there's a tiny bit of voltage but that's practically nothing at all and now let's get to building the rest of the circuit so let's start with the transistors PNP transistor there so this is called the TO92 package you can see it's the plastic one there these are really common and then a flat edge there and since this transistor starts with 2N this PNP type transistor the uh, pin on the left with the flat side facing us is emitter middle pin is base and right pin is collector and of course it's not a bad idea to uh, check data sheets to verify that but every transistor I found that starts with 2N has that same pin layout so now we're going to grab the NPN transistor it's 2N3904 again it starts with 2N so even though its polarity is opposite they named the pins the same so emitter there base there and collector there emitter again indicated by the arrow on the schematic for either one of them NPN though points out whereas PNP it points in. So we're going to put that directly to the uh, negative rail. 
and the pins kind of got spread out so there you go they fit anyways now let's go to these two resistors so the uh, trim pot can go all the way to the 5 volt rail or all the way to ground so if we go all the way to 5 volts you can see we would have a direct current path to the base of the transistor without this resistor and then to ground so the only thing limiting current would be the diode drop there and uh, practically no resistance so we would get the full current the power supply can provide until it burns out and uh, we don't want that so we're going to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor we can use a uh, fairly high value resistor of 10 kilo ohms because the transistor will still saturate the small amount of current that the 10 kilo ohm will provide is still enough to get the uh, transistor to fully conduct in that direction as long as current is flowing through of course so we put that to the middle pin of the transistor and then to the output of the uh, trim pot right there and we do the same thing with the other 10 kilo ohm resistor but to the uh, PNP transistor and there we go so let's see if we can get a better look there you can see they're at the middle pins there and then they both come to the output of the trim pot so now let's get to the LED and protective resistor so I think I purposely did this we have the resistor to the collector of the uh, transistor which goes to the diode which in this case goes to ground but it'll be easier to insert the diodes first or the LEDs I should say and then uh, have the resistors connect to the to the rail so it doesn't matter they're in series the LED just has to have the right polarity so the short lead the cathode indicated by this dash needs to go towards the collector whereas the long lead the anode needs to go to the positive power supply so we're gonna do that directly put the cathode directly to the collector for the NPN transistor so it's tilted there that's pretty good there there you go so we have a short lead the cathode directly to the collector now we're going to take the 220 ohm resistor and uh, put that to the positive rail and I didn't realize I was uh, clipped on something it finally let go and uh, the board jumped so there we go we have 220 ohm resistor there again as long as the LED is in the right direction it doesn't matter which comes first the resistor or the LED so now let's do the same thing over here and not clip onto that again so the LED the cathodes to the negative rail anodes to the collector of the transistor so we need the anode, the long lead, connected to the uh, collector there. And then the uh, short lead, the cathode, will be headed towards ground after we put a resistor in series with it. There we go. So you'll notice the two transistors are wired exactly the same except for the polarities are opposite. So that's the only difference between NPN and PNP transistors if you get matching pairs these have the same basic electrical properties except for the polarities are opposite and uh, the trim pot was halfway turn the power on both LEDs are on so we know that it works let me get my transistor or uh, my uh, screwdriver I should say and of course we can vary it again lowering that and then lowering this one other than the short circuit which uh, makes it connect right about there it shouldn't do that I damaged the trim pot or that caused a short circuit at that point but uh, in any case it's working just fine for our demonstration circuit so now if it helps you I drew out current pads so we have the uh, well we have this centered we have a current path already I mentioned this before but now you can see it drawn out we got five volts here and when it comes to the schematic diagrams the arrows usually point the direction of conventional current so that's when it was believed that current flowed from positive to negative and uh, now we know there's electron flow where it goes the other way but 
as long as you put together the circuits and think of the direction that uh, the current's flowing and that something's more positive than negative it still works out so in any case we got positive flowing through that arrow which it can do through the resistor and then through that arrow because this side's more positive than that side and uh, so both of the base two emitters are conducting which means the transistor from collector to emitter will conduct and it will uh, saturate so you can see those are on there that's when we're set halfway we got 2.5 volts there but as you can see on the circuit we have just as much resistance and voltage drop on that side as we do on that side so this is going to give us 2.5 volts even without the trim pot I'll yank uh, these jumpers out you can see now the uh, trim pot's only connected to the negative rail so it's holding the PNP transistor but if I yank them both then you can see that uh, it's acting just the same as if the trim pot's not there that's because there's already 2.5 volts at that point now we'll put the positive with just positive you can see the NPN transistor comes on and so that's the halfway point there because the circuit is uh, wired to already be at that halfway point without the trim pot and now when I turn the trim pot so that we go all the way to the positive rail then we saw this with just the jumpers we yanked out the negative rail jumper and we had the same position that's because we're connected directly to the positive rail uh, in either case whether we turn the trim pot over there or if we yank out the uh, negative one so you can see that the NPN transistor is conducting now where the uh, LED is on and that's because now there's no reason for the uh, 5 volts here to travel this way because we have 5 volts directly there there's no voltage difference so it's not going to flow there but we have this path here through the transistor to negative which is going to allow the uh, transistor to conduct fully and of course the closer I get to uh, 0 volts this one will start conducting and that's because there will be a more than 5 volts or 5 volts here and then not quite 5 volts a little bit lower so there will be a difference so it will start conducting a little bit but uh, when we go all the way then only this transistor can conduct and of course we have the other position other than the uh, short circuit where it briefly makes a connection where it's not supposed to that shouldn't uh, happen but uh, in any case we go to the negative rail now only this LED is conducting we're at the negative rail and the other side of the transistor from base to emitter is the uh, positive side of the power supply so we have a current path now through that transistor which allows it to conduct fully it's not blocking the current anymore so same basic principles polarities are just opposite because this one's an NPN transistor that one's a PNP transistor and I mentioned before that uh, both of these two transistors have the same basic properties not every NPN transistor has the same basic properties as the PNP transistor these two were just made together to have about the same properties you have to look at the data sheet and get their exact uh, properties so now let's look at the base to emitter voltage so I zoomed in here to start off with but uh, it takes a certain amount of voltage before the base to emitter will start conducting current and uh, so it won't pass any current at all until you get to that voltage about 0.6 volts for the NPN transistor and then it will start conducting current which will allow a multiple amount of current to flow through until you hit saturation and uh, the uh, PNP transistor same thing except for the base to emitter the polarity is opposite because currents flow in the opposite way and voltages are opposite but you need a negative 0.6 volts across there so we can prove that with the multimeter so now that we zoom back we can set it to uh, voltage auto ranging as I said before and to uh, let's do the NPN one first so red probe is going to be base black probe is going to be emitter that's for uh, both of these transistors we can get the uh, base of the transistor by just going to the resistor that connects to it and then since the emitter goes to ground we can connect there so you can see it's 0.7 volts and uh, 
slightly more than 0.6 volts, but it's going to stop going up about uh, this this range there. So let's do the same thing over here. The uh, red probe where the resistor comes to the base, and then the black probe to where the emitter is. There we go. And now you can see we have a negative voltage, but the negative voltage is equal to the uh, positive voltage of the other one. That's the main takeaway. That's about how much voltage it's blocking. So at lower level of current, it should block a little bit less. But in uh, any case, let's quickly turn the uh, trim pot all the way to the positive rail. Now you can see that transistor is on. And that's because at the output of the transistor, we have 5 volts. Let's look at that. And so the LEDs, or the uh, base to emitter diode, I should say, is going to block still about 0.7 volts. Whereas now this one don't have any voltage going to it. You can see that it is zero. And then let's flip it this way. So now it's starting to conduct. Now that one's turning off. There we go, other than that short circuit part. And now this one, base to emitter. We have a negative voltage, I lost it for a bit there, of uh, 0.74, where of course this one, positive there, negative there, has a 0.2 volts, which is less than about 0.6 volts that it's going to take for it to start conducting from collector to emitter. So there is a little voltage across the base to emitter, but not enough to get it to start conducting because it's like a diode. It takes a certain amount, even when it's forward biased, to start conducting. In here, I have the transistor on slightly, and you'll see that uh, it's a little brighter with the probe. That's because there's electromagnetic fields that are hitting the uh, probe, and so it's sending a little more current through there than uh, it should be, but that gets canceled out when we connect over there. So you can see with the LED just uh, barely lit, because I just turned it to where it's starting to turn on, it's only about 0.6 volts across there. As current goes up, it starts blocking a little more, and we'll do the same thing on the uh, on the other side. Turn it till the other one is just about on, there we go. And again, we should have about 0.6 volts. So it takes about 0.6 volts, make sure we got the probes right away, before it'll start conducting, but then once it starts conducting, it's going to start blacking a little bit more. So that's one reason why you have a little bit of protection with semiconductors, LEDs and diodes. They tend to block a little bit more voltage as current goes up, which will, with the resistor, help prevent even more current from uh, going through. Uh, thermal runaway is if they ever hit a point where they start conducting better because they're warm or whatnot then even more current's going to go through and they're going to get even hotter and uh, burn out. Uh, but uh, luckily they tend to block more voltage as they get warmer and so they'll help keep the current low. So in any case, that's really it for the circuit. Hope you uh, enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.